Hi guys, welcome to another uh, Monday night study. So there's a lot of little things going on. I just wanted to let you know what all's going on and kind of take you through a, a tour of the website and just to see things that are going. Change this here. And um, to see some of the stuff that we have for you, some of the things we're putting together for you. So basically, I'm right now still working on the translation of the Damascus Covenant and the community rule and the, the small fragments that go along with it. I think it'll be really interesting when we get it done. Um, so we've got that. We've got a handful of other small prophecy type fragments. And then we haven't done anything with the extra Psalms. Uh, so those are the things. We, so in other words, basically, we're getting close to being done with the 900 uh, plus Dead Sea Scrolls. And I think that's kind of important because in the near future, we should be getting more and more things. Uh, about a decade ago, uh, Joshua's altar was found. Uh, this last year, they found a curse tablet, is basically what they're calling it, uh, which basically proved that uh, Joshua and those events actually happened. And they were in the 1500s, not in the 1200s. And there's lots of little things like that, not groundbreaking, you know, new prophecies per se. Those may be out there too. But just a lot of things that just prove the Bible. For you and I that are believers that believe the Old and the New Testament, this stuff is nice, but it's the same stuff we've always believed. But for people that reject the Bible, uh, it can be life-changing. So we need to be able to be on these things. Paul said eventually all Israel would be saved. And that's probably in the tribulation period, which maybe a few years off, maybe even a decade, I don't know for sure, but it's not yet. Uh, but even that being the case, we still see more and more Jews being saved at this point in history. So a um, couple of things, let's see here. Uh, we're going to be, well, let me just start off here by showing you what we've done is we've kind of redone the, the website, not the app, but the website. So let me just kind of show you this. This looks very similar to what we had before. And let me just go ahead and pause this here. Uh, but this is our, whenever we have a live stream, we have our live stream on here. And this is currently from YouTube, uh, but we can do other things. What we've done is we've moved a few things up here. We've got our home, our bookstore, DSS calendar site, which is still exactly the same, and our giving link. And that'll be on uh, every page. We've started to use or went back to using PHP so I can add all sorts of things. So each one of these pages will have this kind of a header. So you can always have a link back to these things. And also have our um, footer down at the bottom. But basically, this is very similar. I uh, just wanted to share a few things with you. Our about page uh, is very similar. Um, me and my wife, or my wife and I, a little bit about us. And... Uh, so that's interesting there. We have a statement of faith basically showing what we believe. And you guys, I know, have looked at that, and it's the same thing again. Uh, so nothing really new there. Upcoming events is something that we have. And anything that we're doing, we'll, where we're going to be at in the following uh, year would be posted. So coming up this fall, uh, my home church is Calvary Chapel, Johnson County, which is in Olathe, Kansas. They always have a PAL conference, and um, the PAL conference this year is going to be August 4th to the 7th, or 4th uh, to the 6th, and PAL stands for pastors and leaders, but anybody who wants to learn about what's going on, be a leader in their community, is welcome to attend, so it's really open for everyone. It'll be um, uh, shown on their YouTube channel. And this doesn't cost anything. Of course, same thing. Here's the directions, uh, phone number, uh, email, things like that for it. So the Large Prophecy Conference has a, has a charge and a hotel fee and those stuff. And then these, you'd have to get a hotel if you live far away. But these are, are free to attend. So anyway, backing up from there. So uh, on our homepage, we've got our live stream. And that usually tells you when the next week or so. We had a problem with um, when this is blank, uh, people wonder what's going on. So I've been trying to uh, at least put we're having a live stream next Monday at whatever. And so it shows up on here. 
Um, but if that's the case and you click on it and you go to YouTube, you'll see the chat room uh, and you can comment in the chat room. And if someone's in there, you can talk to them. But YouTube erases the chats every so many hours. It's not even per day. So don't be surprised if you go in there while we're not broadcasting and make a comment that nobody ends up seeing it. Just the way YouTube is. So there's a lot of things we'd like to change, and we're thinking of possibly doing something like that on our own. So Subsplash is the one that does our apps, and they have a chat room, a live chat rather, now built into the live streaming. So it might be something that we can try. But anyway, so about a statement of faith, upcoming events. And I just put these in here. Uh, most of you know that we have a DSS calendar site. And we go there quite often. It, it gives you the current time in uh, Dead Sea Scroll time, Gregorian and Pharisee dates, and then studies on how to use them and everything. And then we have a calendar, you know, which is Gregorian style. But we've got um, the um, regular Gregorian style stuff here. And then also like this is Nissan 1, 2, and 3, etc. So that is there every year. It's kind of important because it is slightly different than the Jewish calendar we're used to. Uh, it's the exact same one in the Bible, but it's a really easy to understand calendar. So it's really nice that way. When you look at something that Moses did or someone else, and then three days later something happened, you instantly know a lot of more detail. So it helps a lot. Anyway, on this side, I went ahead and put in a Gregorian calendar and a Zadok calendar link. So Dead Sea Scroll calendar is a Zadok calendar. So basically, this just shows us what the current day is. What I want to do is underneath here, put like the next two holidays. So like right now, it's May 16th. Right here should be something like uh, June 21st would be summer. Yeah, summer solstice. July 4th would be Independence Day. You know, like the next two things. And in this case, ER 25, it would be nice to put down the next few things here. So the next to Kufa, things like that. So if you notice, for instance, we haven't been talking about it, but this will bring it up because you guys will see this all the time. This is ER 25. So exactly 10 days ago, or no, not 10 days ago, it would be uh, seven days ago. Yeah. Um, so in other words, a week ago last Sunday was the date of the flood. So it's just interesting to see things like that. So uh, we'll have things like that on here, just the next couple of things as we go through, as you, you visit the site, if you visit it on a daily basis or whatever, uh, to see those kind of things. And then we have our Facebook page. And of course, you guys know what Facebook looks like, so we won't go there. We have a Telegram uh, page. This particular Telegram page is just for me to let you know what's going on. It's like our news channel. Uh, but there is a chat room associated with it, and we can always add other rooms, so other study places for everyone to study together. <clears throat> Our Bible Facts app, and a lot of you guys have this, but we have one for the Apple. Uh, you can get it at the Apple iStore, uh, Google Phone, uh, Amazon, and then we have a Roku channel. So a lot of you are watching uh, through through this particular device, too. And it's the same thing. We'll have the upcoming streams, uh, upcoming events, uh, the last video we uploaded or posted or went live with, some news, things like that. And it will also have our um, all of our past playlists, which we're trying to organize and get better with. So you can kind of see this here a little bit. So that's our app. That again, that's from Telegram. So Telegram's great for no, excuse me, not Telegram. The Bible Facts app is with Subsplash. The Subsplash is a really great platform. They do a lot of Christian churches, a lot. Uh, a lot of Calvary chapels are on them. Uh, people like Prophecy Watchers, um, Skywatch TV, LA Marzuli, myself. Um, a lot of a lot of them do that. So it, it does have a slight cost with it, but they give us five. I think it's five terabytes of space for files and all this other stuff. So our uh, uh, upcoming events is a widget with them. So very, very nice in that respect. So what I wanted to share you here, I did have website PDFs and it's something that you can look at and download. So I, I changed this around a little bit. So I made it resources. And so in resources, we have PDFs, photos, and files. 
So let me just give you an example of what it, so for files, for instance, all we have at the moment is if you click on it, there's eSword and MySword, and I use eSword all the time here. And just to remind you, it's it's probably my favorite desktop um, Bible program. MySword is one we use for, thought that would have come up. Okay. Hmm. There we, okay, there it was. There it goes. Anyway, so here's eSword. And, of course, you've seen this before, but it's got all of your... Uh, your Bibles, multiple translations. So those are the Bibles, all these translations. A lot of them you can get for free. And then uh, all these commentaries, all these dictionaries, and then an editor for your notes. And then they have an uh, uh, other books category too. So like we have all of the early church fathers, my uh, public domain version of Gad the Seer. It's weird that came up that slow. Anyway, is in there, Josephus, things like that. So, yeah, they have lots of interesting things. So it's it's our favorite uh, app. So anyway, that being the case, uh, when you come here, eSword files, if you click on this, there's two links. That's the ones in red. So this will take you to eSword.net, so you can actually download the program if you're interested. Then there's a place called BibleSupport.com. BibleSupport.com creates... Um, and I think all of this stuff is free. I don't think there's anything that you pay for on this site. There's other places you can go and buy like current Bibles that are copyrighted, NIVs and things like that. But um, so like here, for instance, here's Clarence Larkin, Dispensational Truth. A lot of us have that book. You can get that downloaded for uh, eSword, for instance, uh, uh, tons of other things, all sorts of commentaries, articles. So this is a great site. They don't do it just for eSword, but they'll do eSword, um, MySword, which is the Android version. And then there's uh, the Word. And I think there's a couple of other programs. The guys that create these will have uh, software that they'll port them back and forth. So anyway, um, that's those two. And then here, these are things in my up here on the website that I recommend. So here is, uh, and I got this one from Bible Support. In, in Bible Support, you have to make a an account, but it doesn't cost anything. So anyway, uh, this is the Antonician Father Illusions. So if there is a Antonician Father that commented, say, on Galatians 5.1, and you're reading that, you'd be able to click on this and see what the comment was. Uh, this is a combination, uh, BDB, Thayer, Strong's, uh, and then uh, King James Commentary, Tense Mooted Voice. So this is like the all of the major uh, dictionaries put together in one. So it's a really interesting one. Uh, Gad the Seer, again, someone on Bible support, I forget who it was, saw that the my translation of Gad the Seer was public domain. I made it public domain. So they took it and put it up there. So... Thank you very much, guys, for doing that. They did that about a year or so back. But anyway, uh, HB2 is a Hebrew Bible, and so you can get that. A lot of these are up there, but these are just my favorites. So I went ahead and put them on here. Uh, Jewish Encyclopedia, and then the recommended Bibles text, what I recommend and don't if you're interested in what I think. A lot of you have asked where in the world I got the TRI, and it's right here. Um, I think it's on Bible support, but it may not be anymore. So anyway, and so um, Tense Mood and Voice, uh, Targums. I think the Targum is one that I made. And then uh, the morphological codes and stuff like that. So just to, to show you here real quick, some of these, what they look like. Um, when we go to our Bibles... Here is the Apostolic Bible Polyglot. So this will be the Septuagint version keyed to an enhanced Strong's, which is actually, I believe, called Mendelton's. And you can, uh, it, it's all in English. Uh, and then you can come along here and click and see what it is. The TRI that I use a lot that some of you guys wanted to know, and that's Receive Text or Texas Receptus Interlinear. And of course, I have to be in the New Testament for that to work. So... Here is run over here. This is nice because, like in this case, it's uh, the the book of the generations of the Lord. Uh, this Matthew one, so it says it's Biblos. That's there in Greek. It means book. 
it's Strong's number that, so you can just hover over it and then you have the definition by Strong's. Or if you uh, use that combination and you'd have one for all of them together. Anyway, a nice thing about it is it's got this, um, the uh, grammar part. So this tells you it's a noun, it's nominative, singular, feminine. And, you know, and so a lot of times that doesn't make any difference, but sometimes when you're trying to figure out what it's referring back to, it's really important. So for instance, in, uh, in the book of Jude, uh, we have, let me just go to regular here, but uh, it talks about um, in verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, going after strange faith, and then, you know, are basically destroyed. So this is a clause here, but it's um, um, the cities about them. The way this particular thing, I think this is the right one. I think this should be this one right here. So when it says um, in like manner, so we're talking about the, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them. So Sodom, Gomorrah, Zeboi, Madama, the, the, the cities of the plains. They did this. But they did it just like in the same manner as somebody up here did it. So when we look at the case, the tense mood and verse and everything, in like manner to whom? What are we talking about? And so what's nice, because you've got possibly angels, which would be the Genesis 6 account, uh, if that's what they're talking about, or the Jews coming out of Egypt, and that could be what they're talking about, or um, um, let's see. The, some of the others. So you could have a bunch of stuff. In this particular case, one of these is masculine, one of them is feminine, one of them is neuter. So you come down here and see uh, in like manner, when it refers back to something, is it masculine, singular, or neuter? And you'll be able to tell which one of these instantly is the, what they're referring to. And so when you look at it, you notice that it's talking about the angels. And so there's no doubt about it. A lot of my friends with, that don't believe that Nephilim uh, the Nephilim being talked about in Genesis 6 is real, that it's really Sethites, Canaanites, something else, would say that this can't be. It's got to be like referring to this. But it's nice to have that come back. And, and another example would be in Ephesians where it says, um, you've, by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, uh, not of works, least any man should boast. So, what is it that you're not saved by? It's, it's not of works, but you're saved by faith. It, whatever it is, is not of works, least any man should boast. And so you look at that, and I have Calvinist friends that say, well, the it is the faith. That's the last thing that was there. And so the, the concept from a Calvinistic standpoint or hyper-Calvinist standpoint is that even the faith is given you. you. You never had faith. You can't, you know, the Calvinist-Armenian debate. And so I've got Armenian friends that say, no, no, it's, it can't be faith because that would be, you know, weird. So it's got to be grace. It's the grace that was given to you, etc. You know, and it's interesting. So this big debate. So you go back and you look up the codes on this. Turns out it's not grace or faith we're talking about. It's referring to salvation, uh, which once you think about it, that makes more sense. But to know that the language absolutely says that's what it's referring to. So you're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. When it says it is a gift of God, we're talking about the salvation is a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. So that sometimes people will try to use that verse to prove Arminianism or Calvinism. And you can't prove either one with that. So anyway, it doesn't help us explain anything, but it helps us not dive into something. Same here. It's really interesting. So anyway, the morphological codes. But here's the TRI, and that's what I was showing you. But prepositions, all this stuff, it can come in really handy. Most of the time, it's kind of a waste of time. But sometimes it's really, really good. So anyway, that's there. Uh, Palestinian Targum is something that I put together but or started on it. Murdoch is one of my favorite. This is the Syriac. It's English, but it's translated from the Syriac, not the Greek. So sometimes when there's a, a, um, a debate on a, on a word, 
like if I said I had a dream, uh, you would say, okay, well, in English, does he mean that he dreamt something last night or he had a, a wish of something that he could accomplish as a kid and then he gave up on it because it was a dream or he accomplished the dream? In other words, is it a strong desire or is it something that you do when you're sleeping? In English, dream means both. But suppose you go to Syriac or some other language when it's translated in that particular language, strong desire or a dream that you have during sleep. You know, if that's the case, then you can look at it and instantly know which one they were referring to. So that's why it's nice to look at a translation from an, an early version from another language. So Greek is our main one. That's what the New Testament was written in. But it's nice to have um, a slightly later Hebrew version, Latin version, Syriac version, uh, Georgian. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, the two Coptic versions and a few others. And most of the time, again, it doesn't make any difference. It's exactly the same text. But once in a while, that language will be a little different on a certain word. So it's really nice to see those things. So anyway, this is our e-sword. So again, we've got the Bibles and then the commentaries. We've got all of these. Uh, here's the Antinician Fathers. So for Jude 1.7, uh, Irenaeus in his book on Heresies, Volume 5, this particular mark is where uh, he talked about that. So it's kind of a nice thing to have. Robinson's word pictures um, would come out and uh, give something like that. Um, so like, for instance, here, he's doing the Greek. Robinson's word pictures in like manner. The Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities went after strange flesh in like manner to whom? Well, he makes it an adverbial causative, so it has to refer back to the masculine fallen angels. It can't be the Hebrews in Egypt, for instance. They may have done the same thing, but that's not what the sentence is referring to. So it's really interesting to, to help with that. Vincent's word studies other things like that that's those are under commentaries but the uh we've got strong stairs robinson's smith brown driver briggs for dictionaries so anyway just really nice that way and you can get a lot of these things in here so anyway going back to this so this is uh oh didn't i have the hebrew i was going to show you the hebrew too here's the hebrew and again i have to go back to the old testament for that one hold on so Samuel 1, just grab something. So this is nice, too. Here's the actual Hebrew, the way it is in the text. So if you're learning Hebrew, you would understand it's and he became. And then this is the one that did the becoming. So it's man. So and the man became uh, something. And so this is, and you can go on down and do this. So in this case, you've got the actual word and then what it means in English. And then you've got the strong, so you could look at it. The ahad means one, et cetera. And so that's what this word is here. So it's kind of nice. It's a, it's a um, like the apostolic Bible polyglot is is he is Greek, but um, and then the King James key is the same thing. So you can look up and see what the Greek or the Hebrew is. But if you want to come here and actually learn some of the Hebrew, it's just a little bit more. Um, a little more Hebrew. So it's just, if you're wanting to learn that, it's really nice. So anyway, so those are some of my, my favorites. So all of these are here. Uh, again, there's the TRI. Some people have been asking about it, so it's there. So what I did with this is I just made it, uh, it's a PHP file. So I create eSword and then whatever I drop in that directory instantly appears here. So it's just an, a nice little thing that we can share stuff. This is all free. It's not copyrighted or anything. So same with my sword. We come here. Uh, these two are actually links. And then these are what's in the directory. So my sword.info is that's the one that's probably closest to eSword. But you can use it on an Android phone or an Android tablet, that kind of stuff. So here's where you'd get that. Again, Bible support, same place because you can get whatever it is you're looking for in eSword, MySword, the Word, you know, other things like that. And so in this case, we've got, here's Murdoch's Prashida and uh, King James III, Targum, stuff like that. 
and then the conversion files. This is a simple Bible reader. It will take whichever one you have. Like if you have one for eSword, you can put it in here, click on it. It'll make it for my sword or vice versa. So you can have your favorite texts, commentaries, whatever, on both your tablet and your home PC. So what I do, like I have this computer with this big screen so I can broadcast. But when I do studies, I'll do eSword here. And you saw me throw it up on the screen. I also have, I don't have it down here, but I have a, a nine inch tablet Android. And it's perfect for going to church for me. I've got all my commentaries on it. I can just hit the button and everything. And then if I miss it, I can always, I've, I've got my sword on that and on my phone. So, but this is, I mean, you really have to, I have to do that kind of thing. So for an hour study at church, this is my backup. But anyway, so my sword, e-sword, but this is the thing that you can convert them back and forth. So anyway, just making that available. It's out there anyway on the internet, but just in case it disappears, uh, there are people that keep those things going. But So that's the files. Photos, I want to do the same thing, but like a lot of photo sharing sites, you'll have a picture, a small picture, so you know that's the one, and then you click on it. So what I did in photos... All I have right now is the altar of Joshua. We've been studying that. So if you click on this, it pulls up the pictures that are in the file and simply says, this is the name of the picture. It's the cursed tablet name of God. And this is what it looks like. But if you click on it, you'll have the big. And uh, let's see what I can do here. Let's do it like this. Just to kind of, yeah, see it's a little bit off. But anyway, um, so you can see what it is and you can blow it up and look at it. So and we'll come back here so we were talking about that here's the here's the actual curse tablet we were looking at huh thought i okay there we go oh, okay i was doing it with the pictures okay so anyway let me exit out of this okay good that one's there and then here's a picture of joshua's altar and you can see how it, you can pull it up and of course on that stuff you should be able to yeah blow up the picture and all. This is something, I think I just got that off the internet, but um, maybe I got it from Aaron Lipkin, I'm not sure. Anyway, so there's interesting things to look at uh, with this. So anytime we have a group of pictures with something, they'll be in here. And then um, uh, the others is PDFs. And so this is kind of like what we had before. So church fathers, if you're in interested in the Antonician fathers, that kind of stuff, I'd probably recommend eSword, best place for it. But if you wanted it in PDF format, they're here. And we have Church Father Subjects. So these are the subjects for those books. So like if you click on one of these, it should come up and tell us. Let me just run down here so I can give it an idea. In that book, uh, we should have. Okay, maybe I didn't do that. It should be toward the end here. Okay, here we go. List of subjects. So like if it did he ever talk about the order of Aaron or Abraham and the three visitors, for instance? Yes, he did. It's on this page. And so did he ever? Um, those are other subjects. And then oh, there you go. Did he ever mention Acts chapter 20, verse 35? Well, yes, he did. It's on page 222. So an index is kind of a nice thing to have if you're looking for something. So uh, most of the time, you should be able to just scan for that. So that's why the the anything in eSword would be probably better, but that's there anyway. Um, Dead Sea Scrolls, these are just extra things that we've been using. Uh, PDFs of lots of different things. So you can come in here and kind of see what's there. These will come and go, um, but like here's our 11Q Melchizedek. So that's one that I'd put together. And then some of the other things. Here's the A translation of Habakkuk commentary. So anyway, so done by different people. Uh, here's uh, the complete Dead Sea Scrolls by uh, uh, Verms, which is a kind of a classic. So I got that from somewhere. Anyway, so he, just study things that we have. And then so here's the, uh, we talked about the discoveries in the Judean desert, which is the text put together by the archaeologists. And it's a 40-volume encyclopedia. 
And basically what you can do is click on it. It'll tell you what was discovered. It'll have actual photos. Uh, so that's easy to do. Again, you should be able to look very careful. Can I do that? Oh, that's right. It's not the same. And okay. Anyway, so is this a smudge or is that actually a line? Which means this is a certain word or a different word. You can look at it for yourself that way. So that's it's really nice to have if you're interested. So again, just different things we're doing. And then uh, website PDFs, those are the ones that were there before. This is the ones we used on studies on the um, site. And then the Targumim, that's uh, the Targums are the Aramaic paraphrases of the Old Testament. And so it's basically the Aramaic version of, of the Hebrew. And it's pretty much the same, but let me give you an example. So if we go to Genesis um, chapter 3, verse 4, talking about the Nephilim again. Um, here is what the normal text says, or, or the normal Targum. It says, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came to the daughters of man, they bore children to them. The same were the mighty men from old, men of renown. And everybody says, okay, what about this after that part? So there was like a, another group, or I mean, how, what are they talking about exactly? So if you get to the other Targum, it says this, uh, Shamizia, or Shamiaza rather, and Azazel, who fell from heaven, were on the earth in those days. And also after when the sons of God, the sons of the great, had gone to the daughters of man, they bore children to them. These were they who were called the men of the world or men of names, men of renown. So what we're talking about is also after that, there's two different incursions. One was uh, Azazel. He was first, you know. And then uh, Shemyaza was the leader of the 200 that came down on Mount um, Gibran. Not Gibran. Anyway. Um, so in other words, it's just interesting. So this is commentary. So it's not scripture. But the way they did that is they would put their commentary in the scripture. There's some Bibles like that. But it's interesting to have these old texts, and sometimes they really help explain things like this. So how did the event happen, and then how was there another one after that? What are the, There's obviously two something. A lot of people said, you know, this is obviously pre-flood and after the flood. Actually, no, it's referring to this two separate incursions that happened be, uh, before the flood. So then you have to ask the question, well, where did the giants come from in Canaan after the flood? Well, Jubilees tells you that story. So anyway, um, so just as an example, so that's the Targum. And let's see, going back here, oh, let's go back here again. Um, we'll come back to here, manuscripts. I want to share something else with you. So those are the main things, just the way that it works. So I can throw PDFs up there. You guys can come and get them, look at them. We can discuss them. Uh, you can help me figure them out, rewrite them, whatever. Links to the church, my ch home church, Calvary Chapel, Johnson County. Debka News, and that, these have been there forever, but Debka is an Israeli site if you want Israeli news from their perspective. Sometimes they tell you a little more than our government does. So anyway, and then Lighthouse Trails is an excellent um, heresy hunter type deal. So do proper doctrine. So if there's somebody in my denomination, your denomination, that would be fine, except they've went off the deep end and they're teaching something weird, these guys would probably have an article on it. And so it really helps to have something like that. They're not partisan in the sense, partisans, if I can use that in a religious term, uh, they're not denominational in that sense. They wouldn't yell at you because you're a Baptist or not a Baptist or whatever. But if you are teaching something that's non-biblical, if you're teaching uh, the fornication junk that's going around now or um, all the other stuff. Uh, so anyway, so those are good news uh, agencies. And this is the old DDS studies because I haven't got all these finished yet. But here are the studies pages. Um, these are these are the playlists that we've been doing. So like when you go to uh, past live streams. Uh, this is the same thing. This is uh, Subsplash. And um, 
so like the last one we did was May 10th. Yeah, so last week, uh, the history. So it's here. And that, this is the way, it, pretty much the way it appears in the app also. So you'll be able to click on something like that. And then you can click on it and watch it. You can share it, download it, and here's information about it. Uh, so, and then of course up here, you can search by speaker topic and search in here. So they have a really nice way of doing that. Okay, so that's what these are. And then these are audio playlists of the same. And these are old playlists I need to sort from, from YouTube. But up here, I wanted to share you, show you with this. So the, main, the three main studies we've had are study pages. It's canon studies. So we've got um, biblically endorsed books, the canon itself, and Gnostic works. So like biblically endorsed books, we've got, and you've seen these charts before, but hopefully this is better. So in the Old Testament... There are these, um, and so it looks nice. It's like a highlighting thing, too. So the Sayings of the Seers is one book recorded in Second Chronicles 33, 19. You know, and do we have it? Not to my knowledge, but this is a list of books that are not in the Bible that the Bible would recommend we read if we ever could find them. So, or things that existed. So it's a nice list. Nice thing about it is you should be able to click on it and do a print I don't know how long this will take to do this. But it should come up and you should be able to print it. And just cancel out of it, I think. Ah. Okay, give me a second. So anyway, um, those things are nice. You should be able to print them. Okay, this might be kind of weird. So let me bring up another browser and do that again. And we'll just do this. So anyway, so under canon studies, and we've got that. Uh, biblically endorsed books. The canon itself, uh, what books were in what canon. So that kind of helps. And then um, uh, Gnostic works, the different Gnostic works. So that's uh, interesting things like that. So the Dead Sea Scroll studies is not completed yet. And that's why I have this down here. This is the old way of doing it. And like, here's the list of all the scrolls we've been going through in the caves. So we'll have that in the same one, which I think will be easier for you to use, click on, print, whatever. So if we go back to, uh, here's our herbal medicine study. So the different things we're beginning to put together for our herbal medicine studies from the scrolls. And so we've done those before. I just wanted to kind of share with that. So this is really similar to what we had before uh, except every page is going to have the links up top and um, stuff up below but the main thing is this uh, the resources i think will be really nice files photos and pdfs so we can have a ton of those things organize them easy and uh, go forward from there so i just wanted to share that with you now that's in the site in general and remember if we go up to our uh, upcoming events, next week we'll be at the Homeward Bound Prophecy Conference. So if you're interested, uh, and then the other ones, just come here and see what other things I'm doing. Uh, if I end up going somewhere else in June or July, we'll put it in here. But I did want to share one other thing with you. Let's go back to our nifty little PDF section. And under manuscripts, things that I've been working on, there is this, it's called the Physis script, or actually a disk. And before I click on that and show it to you, and you can uh, feel free to download it, save it, study it, print it, whatever. It's just something I'm currently working on, so it'll change. But let me just tell you a story. Um, when I was back in seminary, uh, I had some really great professors, but one of my professors studied under a guy by the name of Cyrus Gordon. And uh, Cyrus Gordon uh, was probably one of the best uh, linguists, uh, Near Eastern studies, that kind of thing. He wrote several books. One of the ones that we studied in class was The Common Background of the Greek and Hebrew Civilizations. And if you've ever read, um, like, I think it's Second Maccabees, First or Second Maccabees, it talks about uh, some of the stuff that was going on at the time. And so they sent word to the Spartans uh, asking for help with something. 
And basically they said that, you know, our records indicate that you're our long lost brother and you're basically from the Jewish stock uh, that are now over there in Greece doing stuff. And so the Spartans write back saying, we found similar records too, that we were brothers. So what can we help you with? You know, and there's a dialogue of different things that are going on. So that's just one example of the common background of the Greek and Hebrew civilizations, which um, Professor Gordon had talked about. Well, the interesting thing about it is on the island of Crete, uh, they found what is called, uh, I think I believe it's called linear B script. I tend to get those mixed up all the time, A and B. Anyway, um, it's a Minoan or it's a, it's a kind of like a hieroglyph. It's like a syllabus hieroglyph type language. And for the longest time, nobody could figure it out. It turns out the linear A scripts are all uh, Greek. It's just a different uh, letter system for that. And it's a very, very ancient form. And everybody agrees that on the island of Crete with these, these manuscripts uh, is the oldest form of Greek ever unearthed on this planet. And it dates from approximately 1800 B.C., uh, or there, you know, 16 to 1800 for the Greek manuscripts. But then even earlier than this is a linear A script. And it's the same basic script, but it's obviously a different language. It's not Greek. And so people have tried to translate it. Technically, if you go look this up on the internet, they'll tell you it's still an unknown language. Nobody can translate it. Well, Cyrus Gordon, being a believer, said, well, here's the deal. If you look at the text like we do with the Seder, Alam, Jasher, Genesis, uh, Kings and Chronicles. 1800 BC, actually about 1950 BC would be um, Abraham. Okay, so right at 1900 BC, more or less, somewhere right in there, would be the Tower of Babel incident. So if you have a manuscript that's written before at least 1900 BC, there's a good chance it would be the original language, which is the original pre-flood language. And of course, no, today nobody believes that there was a flood, or that not, not in Christianity, but in secular circles. They don't believe there was a flood. They don't believe there was a Noah, so there couldn't be a pre-flood language. So when you say, I, I think this might be an example of a pre-flood language, they look at you like you're trying to go find Goldilocks and the Three Bears, where she actually lived and ate the porridge. It's like, what are you, a nut? And Because they just simply don't believe. Well, the thing is, and what we've talked about before on, um, on uh, looking at the history studies with uh, ancient post-flood history and those things that we've written, uh, we talked about those not too long ago. Uh, if you believe the text, the the... Um, then they, they explain everything and ever, all the, the cities and, and uh, civilizations would have started at certain times and that's about where they start. And so if you don't believe that, you, you can't figure out how in the world they got there. So you call it prehistory. And in reality, there is no prehistory. Everybody has a written record. Almost everybody has a written record tracing their people all the way back to the guy in the boat came over here through a worldwide flood, but they don't believe that happened. So it's got to be myth. So if you take all history, all ancient history and say it's simply myth, then there, then that creates prehistory. There isn't anything else other than history. What is is what is. So same thing, but Professor Gordon said that this is an example of uh, the pre-flood language. So if the pre-flood language would have been Near Eastern, it's basically a type of Phoenician, Hebrew, Aramaic type language. So just knowing that would let you be able to translate it. Supposedly, he was able to translate it. So the reason I bring this up is because this is something I've always been interested in. But a um, don't know exactly what you call that kind of a store over there. But uh, there's a place that makes replicas over in Athens. And they created a uh, replica of this disc. So I was thrilled to be able to order one and get it. So I put this together just to see if you guys are interested. If any of you are out there that have studied under Cyrus Gordon, 
or have friends that studied under Cyrus Gordon uh, that would be interesting in letting me know how in the world they translate this. I'd be interested in knowing it. But let me just show it to you here. This is PDF, and it's just me putting some stuff together. So here's uh, the letter, uh, the basic meaning, uh, modern Hebrew, okay? And then Paleo-Hebrew uh, has a certain form. And that gets us back to 1000 BC or so. You go back to 1500 BC or better. Here's Proto Hebrew. So if we're back to 1500 BC and 2000 ish BC should be, the original language should still be around in some places. Um, these are the two Proto Hebrews or a couple different scripts. And here are a few things from the, the original disk. So I'll show you here. This is a a site comparing a lot of different languages, trying to pull together the alphabets, the syllabuses, the um, uh, hieroglyphs. So here's basically the alphabet, or at least what's the letters or syllabus or syllables, whatever, on the disk. And so just some notes on it. And so here is uh, the one side has 29 words. And so here they are, and with my notes, we're just trying to figure out what these what these words mean. So, and then the back side, same thing. So here's a photo of, and I wonder if I can get this a little bigger. Let's try this here. Just so you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, anyway. This is the front side of the disc. If you, you've probably seen this before, but basically um, it starts here and it wraps it. You can see because the heads and everything face a certain direction. So you're kind of reading this thing like this. And uh, Proto-Hebrew is similar. It'll go, it's not just left to right or right to left. It'll actually go back like this sometimes. And sometimes they have them in spirals. So it's an interesting, this is a very, very old writing. So anyway, it will continue to go around like this, this way, and end here, at least I think. Anyway, so that's the front side, and then here's the back side. So these are fairly different, fairly, I actually took this with my phone. My, um, I've got a Note 20, I think it is. So these, these have really good photo, uh, cameras on them. So anyway, and that's basically all I have. So just to kind of show you that. So front side, back side, interesting manuscript, but we actually could be looking at, and I'm sure it's changed in form, like these look like headdresses from that time period, well not the time period, but the people. So it very easily could be a different form, the manuscripts, the letters beginning to change, but this is a probably, according to Cyrus Gordon, probably an example of pre-flood language. Uh, but nobody seems to know how to, to look at it. I just want to make you aware that it's one of my favorite legends from seminary. And uh, uh, Professor Gordon has is, is went on to be with the Lord now, so uh, we'll just kind of see how that goes. But this is my first rough draft and trying to put together this and do an inscription. So again, it's just something that we can work on. So it's a great example of... Um, the website when we go places and click on here i could have all sorts of studies that we have you guys can have them for free look at them if you figure out something do let me know uh and so we'll figure these stuff we these, these things out <coughs> eventually but i just wanted to share that with you so new website um same basic design live streaming all integrated uh new ways of doing resources mainly so hopefully that is uh is something that uh, will work out good for us. So I'll go ahead and uh, exit out of this. Oh, there we go. So this is what I meant by we can actually print stuff out. So, okay, good. So anyway, I'll go ahead and say good night. So God bless you guys, and we'll see you uh, in two weeks. God bless.